One of the things that I saw recently is you had started your, or you announced your production yes. um, studio. <laughs> so you. I think that's that's so amazing. I mean, for us, like, you know, five years ago we started this tiny company. It was just a page, like mm -hmm. called One Down. Mm -hmm. And our dream was to put Filipinos into the mainstream or be part of their story. We only got you know, to the place of being able to collaborate and, and do more things because there were other people who paid it forward, mm -hmm. right? Like we had no connections, no funding or anything, but it was purely off of community mm -hmm. that we were able to do more things. Mm -hmm. And that's why I actually spent so much time in the Philippines. What do you want out of Hollywood? Mm -hmm. And what do you want to give back mm -hmm. to the Philippines? Mm -hmm. Mainly what I like about Hollywood is, and this is just me being very honest, is are the unions. Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone is really protected out here and that's what we lack. We, um, we lack like an organization that will support creatives and their interests so that everything is progressive so that everybody is constantly getting better so that everybody can do their jobs properly yeah nice no that's amazing <laughs> i feel like i'm saying a lot of shit. i am always bragging about how filipinos are so freaking talented we but are. we never get to see it mm -hmm. and and oftentimes the things that we talk about is like okay american reality tv there is mm -hmm. always a filipino in those singing competitions we mm -hmm. never end up winning mm -hmm. there's always filipinos in the dance competitions we don't end up winning yeah. um but we're so powerful as this creative and, and talent force i'd be curious um to understand more about like what's your vision for like the production studio or what you mm -hmm. see for like you know in cinema oh mm -hmm. uh, well with my production studio that kind of came out of like this past year of me just constantly traveling and meeting new people and discovering that what I really like about acting and about the industry that I'm in is the fact that everything is make-believe that like we get to tell stories we get to create like these worlds that people can kind of um, escape into and um, that's when after like sharing my story so many times to different people um, I came up with one concept that is very near and dear and close to my heart that came from like a person a place of personal experience and um, someone took interest in, in that story and was like you got to create a movie out of this or a tv show and i was like really you think that's interesting he was like it's the most interesting i think i've ever heard in my life and that's when i realized like oh i that's what i like i like storytelling i like um finding inspiration in like everyday life and everyday people uh, ordinary people and like just bringing their stories into into the spotlight and sharing it with the world trying to inspire people and my goal for my production studio specifically in the Philippines is again, um, I just wanna be able to bring back all my learnings and resources that I, and connections that I'm able to build while traveling, hopefully here in LA, maybe in Korea and bring that back home and, and try to expand like everybody else's network. Yeah. Um, how do you go about learning? And I asked this question because um, I remember when I was first starting um, my career in, in media, one of my favorite quotes was, if you're the smartest person in a room, you're in the wrong room. Mm -hmm. And I became obsessed with just like always being the new person mm -hmm. um, and always making mistakes. Um, so how do you go about learning and, mm -hmm. and kind of improving your skill set? I actually like that quote too. Um, that's something that I started becoming a little bit more conscious about too in the past two years, I would say. Being very aware of the people that I surround myself with, the media that I consume, the, the stuff that I feed my brain. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like my our brains are the most important um, assets that we have. and we have to take care of it at just as much as we take care of our body and like with our body right we don't want to put toxicity into mm -hmm. it we don't we try to avoid junk food obviously <laughs> it's inevitable <laughs> but like we try our best to like only put clean skincare on our skin eat good food but a lot of people forget that our brain is actually the most important thing that we have so even like the media that we consume the books we read the people we surround ourselves ourselves with the type of conversations we're having on an everyday basis we got to be more i think intentional have more purpose in everyday life so that 
We're constantly pushing ourselves to like grow and learn. And for me personally, when it comes to learning, I'm the type of person I love asking questions. Mm. I love observing people. I love reading too. Um, and I think actually I, I one thing I noticed, especially on the internet, is a lot of people don't read nowadays. I notice that because like it's so easy to create clickbaity headlines. Mm, I know what you and mean. everybody believes it right away. And I'm like, did you guys not read the article? Because the the headline is kind of questionable, but the article itself is where the actual message and content is. And people just don't read anymore. They avoid it. That's what I try to do. I try to read a lot. The hard thing about you know, being in media is mm -hmm. attention mm -hmm. is is everything. And I think sometimes there's that discussion mm -hmm. of do you sacrifice, you know, quality for the sake of views, mm -hmm. attention, etc. But I think one of the other things is like we were so passionate about talking about things that no one was comfortable talking about. Mm -hmm. Like our first article that was huge was talking about T addressing toxic behaviors in Filipino families okay. and like millions of people were talking about this one article mm -hmm. um, and then we talked about body shaming and we mm -hmm. talked about Filipinos in Hollywood mm -hmm. and I think that's like one thing that I really admire about mm -hmm. how you go about mm -hmm. certain things is like you really speak your truth mm -hmm. of what feels authentic to you but I also think that's incredibly hard one of the things like when I meet with new people who want to get into entertainment because there's not that many Filipinos mm -hmm. yet and one of my like tips is always like, you have to have tough skin. You are going to read ugly comments that are gonna tear you apart and people will not care because it doesn't affect them, mm -hmm. but you have to have tough skin. Mm -hmm. How did you develop that? It took a long time, honestly. Um, my toxic behavior for the longest time was I got so addicted to like reading hate comments. Mm. I thought before that I was really good at handling it, but then as I got older, I realized my way of like coping with it was like, the reason why I was so obsessed with reading hate tweets and hate comments and everything was because I was trying to figure out what people thought was wrong with me and kind of fix myself to adjust for them. Mm. When I became aware of that, that's when I completely kind of shut myself off from social media. I think my fans, a lot of my longtime fans can say that like before on social media, I was very active. I was very actually talkative. <laughs> um, I would always have conversations with anyone on my Twitter. But then um, a few years back, I just kind of left instantly um, after a few like series of backlashes. And then after that, like I, ever since then, I became scared of talking because one thing that I had a difficult time with growing up was just accepting that other people have can have different opinions mm -hmm. um, and accepting the fact that some people just aren't going to like me. I always wanted everyone to mm -hmm. like me. So um, you're a people pleaser. Yeah. And I think a lot of Filipinos are people yeah. pleasers. And I think it, it, that goes back all the way to Col being colonized and everything mm -hmm. like we constantly just want to prove our worth prove our value make people love us over the past two years again there was a lot of growth in these past two years i just learned to be okay with people not being okay with me mm -hmm. and i think it just starts there being at peace with accepting accepting that yeah that's no. that's the sad reality like i there's no like mystery potion or or like one self-help book that I can I can offer to anyone who's going through a similar situation. It's just you have to learn to prioritize what's important to you and and ignore what isn't. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that like I and and many others like admire mm -hmm. about you like just being able to kind of rise above mm -hmm. the the different things of like being talked about mm -hmm. and being doubted. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess, you know, to kind of wrap this all up, mm -hmm. what are you most thankful mm -hmm. and grateful about from all your past years mm -hmm. being here, you know, in Los Angeles and the movie is about mm -hmm. to premiere and so many people are gonna be able to see you and mm -hmm. it, it's just the start. I think I'm most grateful for just having such a colorful life at such a young age. Mm -hmm. I've experienced so much, um, 
because of my of the career choice that I made. Not just recently, but like working at a young age and everything. I learned so much in such a short span of time. I matured so fast, whether that's a, people think that's a good thing or a bad thing, but my life has definitely been exciting because there's so many different layers to it. Um, I've experienced, I think, more than a lot of people twice my age have experienced. And for that, I'll forever be grateful. I've definitely learned a lot from everything that I've done, everything that I've experienced, everybody that I've had the opportunity to work with. I've made so many friends, so many great connections over the years, so many mentors. Those are people that, and lessons that I will like carry with me for the rest of my life and cherish. And they're like the foundation of my existence. And so for that, I will forever be grateful. Well, thank you so much for, for <laughs> chatting with me. I think one of the things that really stands out to me is one, how hungry <laughs> you are, you know, just to work and, and mm -hmm. to put in the work and to learn, you know, LA and and anywhere really in the world is, is such a, a playground to learn like I'm experienced that in Manila like yeah. you've already you already know mm -hmm. you know how it goes but mm -hmm. for me everything is new and yeah. I'm like discovering everything about entertainment in the mm -hmm. Philippines well that's um, me for Hollywood yeah exactly <laughs> so we're just trading places yeah. but yeah you're, you're so hungry and I think you're also very humble mm -hmm. and I think I really appreciate that you're really pursuing being an artist mm -hmm. you want to be known for your talents and the things the way you entertain and tell a story mm -hmm. and so I'm so excited one to mm -hmm. see the movie um, but I think I'll actually be in the Philippines so I'll watch okay. it I'll watch it in the Philippines Yay. excited to see that and then too like I'm just so excited to see what more you create mm -hmm. and and how you really tell the story of all your experiences but then also that of the Filipino Thank but yeah you. this was Solid Talks Unfiltered I'm Leo Bea and, and I'm Liza Soberano and thanks for watching make sure you watch um, Lisa Frankenstein in theaters in February thank you